What is happening Facebook Live? State of the Union is happening in 30 minutes, so we got to be quick tonight because I all because I know y'all want to hear what Trump's about to say. What's he going to say? Anyways, this is the State of the Union on apps. Three ways to make money with apps. Well, with business apps specifically, really all kinds of apps, but this is just a little primer on how you can make some cash if you have a business. A lot of people, when they think about apps, they don't really think about it for their business. They tend to think about an app that's like a consumer-based app, like an Instagram or Facebook or a dating app, something that's going to have a lot of users. But my question to you tonight is what business are you in? And what's one area of your business that you spend too much money on that uh, you don't get enough sales out of? What's one area of your business that's hurting? And if you're an employee, you know a lot of people are employees out there. What's one area of the company that you work for that is like not going good, that's not right, that could be better, that could be solved by a mobile app? So get your mind thinking a little bit, and we'll go through some of the uh, – the ways that you can make money with mobile apps. So the first thing is right off the top that I wanna to get to is to make sure that there's always one way to know if you need a mobile app, just one. You only have to answer one question to know if your business or your website or whatever you do, if you need a mobile app, and that's to look at your traffic. So if you look at the traffic on Google Analytics or whatever your reporting platform is, determine where that traffic's coming from. Not like if it's coming from Google or Bing, determine how much of it's mobile. So there's a way in Google Analytics to drill down and see the device type and determine what's the device type and the percentage. <coughs> and if half, I, I mean, it's a guarantee that over half your traffic right now is mobile. So if over half of it's mobile, then you'd be pretty sure you need a mobile app or you need some sort of mobile presence. You could have a responsive website, that's all right. You could have a, uh, an app, perfect, and then you could have what they're now calling a progressive web app, which is basically it's a website, but when it opens, it takes up the whole screen. So one of those three things could potentially benefit you. So that's how you know right off the bat if you need a mobile app, if more than half of your traffic is coming from, from mobile devices. If you're running ads on Facebook, Instagram, uh, if you're sending out emails to your customers, when they're clicking on those links and getting to your page and getting to your ad, are they coming from a mobile device? When they're opening your email, is it happening from a mobile device? Like You need to look at the statistics to know that people are coming from a mobile device. And if they're coming from a mobile device, then you should give them a mobile experience. It's that simple. So that's how you know if you need it. So now let's just talk about three simple ways that, um, that you can make money, okay? Um, so the three ways are real simple. First, increase sales or leads. So bring more traffic into your business. Second is to reduce costs. Maybe you're spending a lot of money on um, employees or something like that. And then the third, well, no, Cost would be more like, um, say you're renting a software. Say you're renting software from another company. And then the final one would be manpower. Can you reduce your manpower? So I'll just give you some ideas tonight that'll kind of fall into those three categories. Remember, you're always trying in your business to increase something or to decrease your costs, right? Like save money, right? So most people have an income problem. So if you have an income problem, then you need to generate leads. So let's just... I'm just going to bounce some ideas off you of um, ways you can increase your business. So, like, think about Apple. When you go to the Apple store and they don't have, like, checkout and they don't have a register, and they do that because they have express payments. And think even about, like, Uber. When you take an Uber, one of the best parts about Uber is you don't actually have to pay for or, or do a transaction at the end. You don't have to hand your credit card to somebody and wait for a transaction to occur. It just automatically happens. So express payments, like that's a good way that you can you know, increase the efficiency of your product or your business 
you know, if you're a retailer, whatever you are, you start to see them a little more now where um, people are paying, they're still swiping a card, and then you sign on like an iPad. That's better. I mean, at least we're getting rid of paper at that point. But moving forward, how could your business benefit from express payments? Um, the other good thing about express payments, you know, beyond signatures and quick payment, is that you could actually track, like, if you are in a retail environment, um, how much employees are actually selling, right? Like, if they're walking around the store with a, with a swipe device and um, selling something, especially in retail, you could actually tell who's selling and who's not and who's performing the best. So express payments, good way to increase uh, some customer service. Uh, here's a good example. What if you have like a, a loan or a mortgage company, right? And so like if you're an agent, a sales agent <coughs> of any type in the field, when somebody calls you and they ask you for information, hey, what's the status of my loan? I don't know. Let me call the office. And then you got to call the office. Hey, office, what's the status of Mr. Baker's loan? All right, cool. Now I got to call this guy back. Hey, your loan, the title company called. They said you didn't sign the documents right. You need to re-sign the document, resubmit the document, right? But I had to do like three phone calls to get that information instead of just having it at my fingertips. What's up, Justin? Thanks for the positive comments on the uh, other video. Appreciate that, my man. Much appreciated. So here's the situation: loan company. You know, a lot of there, there's all this information in the pipeline, and the only way to get at that information is by a computer. Maybe you could somehow look it up from your phone. But like, why not just create a mobile app for your employees? Why not improve the efficiency of the entire system? Why don't you increase your customer service? Right? Talking about ways that you can make money with apps. One of them is in increasing a business process. Increase your customer service. <coughs> your customers will appreciate that. And in this example, the agents in the field, the people that are actually trying to get the information, trying to close more loans. Like if you're trying to, if you're in the mortgage business and you're trying to close more, this would be very helpful to you, right? A way to close faster. Um, what about sales training, right? Like. If you think about if, if you're in sales and whatever, let's say you're selling cars, how are you getting information? Like you can memorize a lot of it, right? But, but what if somebody comes in and they want specific information? And as the customer, I might actually have that information on my phone. I guess you as a sales guy could also have it. But what if you had a more detailed information? What if you had catalogs? What if you had product information? What if you had the best techniques that salespeople were using at that time to sell a particular product. Right now we're talking about cars, but if it was like, I don't know, say it was like a, a Ford Raptor truck, which is a high-end truck that has a lot of add-ons and stuff like that. Be very beneficial to your customers to increase that customer service, to increase the sales through better sales training to have more information. The other thing you could do with that is, say you're like the, um, what do they call it? The sales manager, right? Say I'm the sales manager and I wanted to train my people. I can just make a quick video and then the video would be out to the entire team, right? Like there's some companies out there like, um, like uh, Lightspeed TV, which is owned by Bradley, right? They make sales training videos and they have like a mobile app that they can watch them on. That's cool. You know, but it costs a lot of money to go to Brad and like get this thing out. What if you could just create a video and have it out to your team? Like say you're a small shop, you know, okay. Pretty, pretty easy way. So um, the, the last way to kind of improve a process and increase your sales, increase your revenues is if you're in like, these are just a couple examples. Um, if you have inventory management, like think how, Inventory management systems run now. I have a client wine warehouse and uh, they have a bunch of wine and they have a warehouse. Original name, huh? <laughs> anyway, they, uh, they don't really know like individually what's on, what's in a warehouse. They don't like if you, if you call them for a case of wine, hey, I need a case of wine. And the guy's like at his computer, he can look it up and see if it's available. But if he's not, and he actually like has to call the office and someone has to look it up. So 
I mean, they have an inventory management system. It's all on a computer. It's all in a database. And the only way they can get to it is through a desktop computer. Dude, make an app. It's that simple. You know. So that could that could in, increase performance. You know, give you a lot. So you know, as we go, um, some ways to you know increase the value of your business um, and actually bring more sales, more leads, generate more traffic is obviously number one, faster payments. If you can cut down the processing time between somebody making a decision to buy and buying and you know swiping, a, getting rid of swiping a card, um, all the better. So faster payments. Uh, we gave you an example of a loan tracking system that can improve customer service, better sales training for your sales agents, um, for your salespeople on the floor, so that they actually have more information and can close more deals. And then finally, the inventory control. If you can control inventory a lot better, um, then you can obviously sell a lot more. If you know what's in your inventory, you can sell a lot more. So there's four ways to increase uh, increase sales and leads and bring more business. So that's a good way. And then, so finally, the, the other side of the coin, right, when you talk about making money with apps is saving money. So how can an app save your business money? So really two ways, um, reducing the manpower. So if you can get rid of a manual process and get rid of a few employees, boom. Employees are the biggest, biggest cost to a business. Justin, how much do simple apps cost? What's simple? Um, sorry, sorry to break it up, everybody. Um, the question is, how much do simple apps, apps cost? And by the way, if you have a question, just throw it in the comment. Um, I don't know what you mean by simple, but I can tell you that if you can figure out the amount, of, like all the features you want in your app, like say you want 10 features, and, it, and each feature takes eight hours, that's 80 hours. So the first thing you have to do is figure out all the features you want. And then once you figure out the features you want, um, the tasks, the hours, and then once you have hours, it depends, right? You could, if, it, if it's 100 hours and you get it done in Bangalore, India, it's 12 bucks. So it's 1,200 bucks. If you get it done here, it's 100 bucks an hour. So it's $10,000. That's how you do it. So like a time clock geofencing. Dude, time clock, um, what do you need the geofencing for? Just to make sure people are in like a certain area. So something like that is probably like, honestly, no app I've been built in the last four or five years or seen built has been done for under 250 hours, right? So figure that out. What's up, Bernie? If um, I get the job. Geofence, time clock. Yeah, well, anyways, I'll just keep it general. Um, give me a call. Let's have a conversation about the Justin. But um, like I said, 250 hours is like the minimum build out I've seen for an app in the last couple of years. So depending on, you know, if you're getting, if it's 100 bucks an hour, that's 25 grand. You know, it's kind of a good starting point. And if you're you know, doing that in India for 10 bucks an hour, obviously it's 2,500 bucks. So just it, it kind of depends where you get it done, how you get it done, and all that good stuff. What's up, Big Earn? How you doing, man? Happy New Year. What are you doing for the Super Bowl? Super Bowl's coming up. Who you guys all got out there? If you got some interest in the Super Bowl, Patriots. I'm a Patriots. I'm a Patriots fan because the Niners were so horrible for so long that I figured I should just root for a winner because I grew up a winner when the Niners were winners. So that's who I'm rooting for. Y'all can hate. Hate all you want. Stay of the Union's coming up tonight. I know a lot of y'all are going to be hating. It's all right. I know how you feel, but when I look at my bank statement, it looks pretty damn good to me. I'm about money. Um, okay. So ways to reduce costs with apps. Um, how about, like, Here's just some ideas, right? Like, how do you reduce costs? Like, think about when the cable guy comes to your house. The cable guy comes to your house, at least he does in San Francisco here, and he's got a clipboard, and he's got, like, some paperwork on it. And he's got some notes, like a work order, but he doesn't have any idea 
like what I talked to with the rep the night before. Rep called me up, troubleshot the damn thing for 20 minutes, figured it out. And they go, oh, we got to send a rep out. And then the rep comes out. And it's like, I'm having the same damn conversation with him that I had the night before. Why can't they just have a mobile app and have this information at his fingertips? Move the information from the computer that I talked about with the rep onto his device. Better yet, his device not only has that information. So he shows up when he walks into the, into the, um, into the house, he kind of knows what he needs. Second, if he's running any kind of tests or any kind of diagnostics, he can mark it on the app so it updates back to the main computer, right? Then, um, you know, if he installs parts, whatever, if he, if he needs data, like how to fix something, he could potentially have videos, he could have manuals on his device instead of carrying books around. It's all like pretty standard stuff. So if you can do all of that and have that on a device, and at the end of the thing, I could actually just sign the damn phone. I don't have to sign his piece of paper. You know, somebody at the office looks at that paper and has to actually enter that data back into a computer. Just so that guy servicing my cable box, he could do it all from a phone. It could be in the computer. We could reduce a lot of costs with that. Another good way an app can make you money, reducing costs. How about insurance claims, right? Like, how are you doing insurance claims now? You know, they're kind of, some of the, some of the places are pretty good now. Like, but now you could basically have a rep just show up at your house with a phone and actually start taking pictures of the damage, get a statement from you on the device. They could even record a statement from you that could be transcribed, go straight into the file. Um, instead of an insurance rep being able to do 10 claims a week, they could probably do 20, right? So another way we can reduce a manual process, good way to make money, reduce a manual process, make some money by saving some money. Um, what about estimations? How many of you have a business that relies on estimations? Painters, construction workers, roofers, landscaping. If you do estimates, estimates, the more estimates you do, the more business you're going to get, right? It's just, and then it's like, how many estimates can you do in a week, right? Because you have a process, you go out and maybe you take some photos on your phone. Maybe, you know, you write some notes down somewhere. Maybe you're sophisticated and you have an iPad and you put the notes in the iPad. Then you go back to the office. Like, let's say you do five of those in a day, right? And then that night you have to go home and take all that data and come up with an estimate for, for those five. So you did a good job being out in the field estimating, but now you got to stay up all night making the damn documents and sending them out to people. So what if you just had an app that did all that from the beginning? Like estimations is, is a sweet spot. If you have a business that relies on estimations, you should, you should definitely build an app. Not only should you build an app, you should build an app that's so good that you could sell it to other companies. So if you're in the painting business and you create an app that does estimates really good, then you could sell it to all the other painting companies and all the landscapers and everybody else on top of that. Now you'd be in the mobile app estimation business. You wouldn't have to be out painting houses anymore. Or you could still paint houses and you can make money off the app. I know you want to make more money. I want to make more money. Um, another thing you could do to reduce some costs, if you have a company that has job sites, so any kind of job sites that you have, um, have to have safety reports. Like a, like a building job site has a daily safety report, right? At the beginning of the day, people sign up and they, they do the safety report. And then usually at the end of the day, they, they update the safety report. What's up, Reardon? What's up, Reardon? Super Bowl. Ernie's up there. He's ready to do some drinking. Super Bowl, y'all. Um, anyways, job site safety reports. So a lot of them at the beginning of the shift, at the end of the shift, you could have something. Um, if an incident does happen, you could actually report it on the mobile app. So it would go straight to the office. There wouldn't have to be any kind of... Um, um, paperwork that has to get transcribed or anything like that. If there's hazards, if, if you had a near miss, maybe you could flag that so that the people getting to the job site the next morning could see that. They could just see like an alert of like all the near misses or areas if there's a certain area of the job site that people shouldn't be screwing around in like or it's slippery or whatever. You could actually just tag that. So when I get there in the morning time and I take over your shift, 
to the you know to the next shift of the 24 hours, then I can see where the dangers are, what happened, what's going on. So these are all ways you can reduce costs in your business, right? You can have field technicians, anybody that's going out in the field on service calls, um, empower your your service techs to have data at their fingertips and to be able to update data on their device versus actually having a piece of paper on a clipboard. Insurance claims, any kind of claims where you need something done, um, no brainer. Estimates, estimates, estimates. I'm big on estimates. The more estimates I do, the more money I make. I know a lot of people who are in the estimates business. You do estimates, the more you can do, the more you can make. It's that simple. So if a mobile app can help you get estimates out faster, got to do it. And then job site safety. If you can improve job site safety so people aren't getting injured, so you don't have workers' comp claims. Like these are big expenses to businesses. So those are just four, you know, four ways to kind of increase sales, increase leads, and then four ways to decrease. And I got a ton of them. I got other stuff. So if you um, – Want to talk to me directly, just go to my website, jeremycallahan.com, and there is a form on there to actually schedule the time to talk to me. And we can talk about stuff specific to your business. Um, I am the app man. I develop mobile apps, but I also have a master's degree in business administration. I've started a lot of businesses as well. Um, some very successful, some have failed. So I know the ins and outs of what to do and what not to do and how to get to the bottom of where the bottlenecks are in your business and then how to get through those things very quickly and very efficiently. Take your business to the next level, grow your business, make more money, send your kids to better school, fly in a private jet. All right, that is a wrap on the app or not to app show. It's 552 on the State of the Union night. Get out there, watch it, tell me what you think. Put something in the comments. If you ever have any questions, get in touch with me. I would love to help you. Peace out, y'all.